Okay friends, I really need you to watch to the end. This is by far one of the most important videos I've ever made in my life because what we're going to do today is we're going to analyze and break down a draft number three from a student that we've worked with. In fact, a scholarship student from Kenya that we're actively working with. And in its current form, this third draft is at a 6.5 to 7 out of 10, which is really good. That's like top 20% already. But then in the second half of this video, we're going to discuss how we elevated this essay all the way up to a nine, 9.5 out of 10. Now, before we get started, I would like to emphasize that yes, we do a lot of pro bono work and we want to work with scholarship students. So if you're interested in having your essay edited or working with us, visit our website, www.elevated.school and then hit the get started button. Once you fill out that information, we're gonna send another form and there you'll explain that you're a scholarship student and that you're looking to receive help from us. And of course, for those of you guys who are looking for a professional review of your essay, Essays, visit www.elevated.school slash edit my essay. We'll return your essay with detailed feedback and commentary within three business days or 72 hours. And if you want it sooner, we also offer that too. Trust me guys, when I say I am not taking any days off this October, I'll take a few days off in November when my fiance's family is visiting, but I am dedicated to making sure that you guys get the help that you need and deserve and get your butts into college or wherever you wanna go. Let's begin. Child, why did no one ever teach you that you cannot turn people into homes. I cocoon myself in my blanket, bracing against the chill of my attic as I read the first line of Nikita Gill's poem over and over again. I pause momentarily, puzzled by the riddle before me. Now, if you guys have been paying attention on this channel, you'll know that I typically don't recommend beginning with a quote. And honestly, I had a lot of qualms and back and forth with some of the other editors about this particular opening, but in the end, we decided that it was pretty effective. And the reason why it works is because it ties into this story's central theme and also because because it's a line from a poem and showcases a little bit more intellectual curiosity as opposed to just quoting some famous figure like Martin Luther King or some very prominent leader. In the end, my recommendation was to keep this quote, but you'll see more about why as we move forward. As the weight of her words hung heavy in the air, my mother, tears streaming, shared the painful truth. My father had wed another. His accusations echoed, intensifying her pain. Curled in the corner, her words bitter and choked, she questioned the other woman's allure. Beauty, youth, intellect. The room felt as empty as my heart, witnessing my once indomitable mother reduced to questioning her worth. My father, like the fading sunset, had vanished, leaving behind a void in our lives. As the first son, I inherited not just the legacy, but also the solemn responsibilities of a patriarch. Among these, the weightiest mantle was that of consoling my bereft mother, tending to the fractured pieces of her heart and nurturing her back to health. As you guys can see, this is a pretty serious emotional problem, and this student is a very gifted writer. They're using a lot of lyrical language to present and discuss the problem. However, that being said, it's still a problem. You guys are gonna see in the next version Despite the fact that this was really beautiful writing, we did still have to chop off quite a bit because ultimately one of the most important concepts on this channel is the problem solution ratio. And unless your problem is really mind blowingly significant, which in this case, it still doesn't qualify, then we do want to limit the problem section to as short as it can be. Given the tumultuous feelings reverberating around me in our Kenyan home, I first tried consoling her by stocking up on her favorite ice cream, pecan butter, and engaging and wishful speech. It will be fine. You'll be okay. You're worth so much more. Hoping that, as portrayed in my favorite teenage heartbreak movies, it would slowly heal the wounds inflicted upon her heart. I was wrong. There needed to be a more permanent solution. And after much back and forth with myself, I knew what I had to do. Let's take a look at what exactly is solution, the student making things happen, and what is problem, things happening to the student. So as you'll see in these three paragraphs, I've highlighted the problem in red, some reflection in yellow, and the actual solution in green. At first glance, your essay might look like something similar and you might be thinking that this is a really big problem, but this is the opening, really just the first couple hundred words of the story. And it's really, really great that this student already has some green solution here. Now the problem that we're gonna wanna shorten is this section here the opening, maybe the first paragraph, that first sentence in the second paragraph. But actually, what's interesting is we're gonna wanna keep this second problem here and just keep it very, very short. By encountering a second problem after attempting an initial solution, we actually get to see the student display perseverance, which as you guys know, is one of the six main criteria of V-SPICE. I delved forward into the study of human emotion. Countless visits to the psychology section of the public library became part of my daily schedule. I sought to understand the intricacies of the human heart. It's fragile limits, enthusiasm, and makeup. Psychology, 
fascinated me. Skimming through multiple books and journals, I made astounding discoveries. It was revealed to me how the mind masks thought behind intense emotions. I also discovered the heart as more than its anatomical intricacies, playing an obscure role in the human psyche. Beyond its rhythmic symphony, recent discoveries revealed to me that the heart possesses its own neural network, a hidden intelligence steering our emotions and responses. Like a coin, its purpose is two-sided, emotional and physiological. Many doctors can repair an anatomically dysfunctional heart, but only few are the ones brave enough to repair an emotionally broken one. I wanted to be one of them. Beautiful section. This is an amazing example of fusing together curiosity with proactivity, right? The student is literally going to the library on their own and researching this new subject in an effort to help heal and take care of their mom. In my search for books, specifically elucidating on heartbreak, I came across a myriad of publications by famous psychologists and researchers like Jonice Webb and Susan Anderson. Susan in her book explained grief and the stages in which it follows. She called it the grief cycle. I used it as a template for understanding my mother's lacrimose emotions. However, the terms were also complex. Cognitive dissonance, catharsis, rumination. I grew frustrated and downhearted, wondering if it was even worth trying to comprehend such complicated ideas. As I closed what I thought would be the last text in the quest, I peeked at a book with worn leather and chipped letters, hidden in the dark corner of the aisle. I blew off the dust on the cover and opened to the first page, The Wisdom of a Broken Heart by Susan Piver, written in 2010. Although Piver held no formal degree in psychology, her words about the human psyche were profound. I realized that in depression, nothing matters. And in sadness, everything matters, she wrote. This simple idea transformed the way I distinguished between what to look for and what to look past during the therapy session like conversations with my mother. As we can see, guys, there are three paragraphs of intellectual curiosity here. However, do we really need all three paragraphs? Probably not. I actually thought that the second one with Jonice Webb and the Susan Anderson was really, really strong. I wouldn't recommend having like another quote here because I'm more interested in what this student has to say as opposed to, you know, an actual quote from Piver's book. Let's take a look at the ending, and this is probably the most important part because now the student is actually taking these academic concepts and applying them in real life to a relationship. Absolutely key, guys. If you learn anything in this video, it should be that. Show yourself applying that knowledge, showcasing initiative, leadership, as well as selflessness in the climax, in the crux of your essay. I formulated a schedule for our conversations, which started with my morning affirmations. My heartbreak is just a chapter. Not not my whole story. Included ways to release stress through punching anger pillows and delved into the nitty gritty of her broken heart. To do so, we'd move to my office, a designated corner of my bedroom lined with yoga mats and begin the session. So this already is incredibly close to a nine out of 10, 10 out of 10 paragraph. What really sets this apart is actually unique flow. Having parentheses here and then over here, you know, more parentheses, but this one's really funny. It has humor. And then a third parentheses over here, which showcases humility. It's having those little risks when it comes to punctuation flow style that's really going to elevate your essay from an eight to a nine or 10. And I won't say that you should do this for every single section or every single sentence, but you can and should try tactically taking risks once you guys reach that solid seven and eight out of 10. Ultimately, this is how you make sure that your story doesn't sound like it was written by ChatGPT, right? This is a paragraph that ChatGPT could not have written. So why do you feel like you can't move on from this mom? I ask. It's because I gave your father my heart. And now that he has left, I have nowhere else to call home, she confessed. At dusk, we lay snuggled in blankets as we watched my mother's favorite comedy franchise, Medea. We laughed at the comic genius of Tyler Perry as we earnestly got to the bottom of pints of pecan butter ice cream. Through this experience, I witnessed the covert role psychology plays in human life, the lack thereof being a leading cause of death in my country. It is heartbreaking that it is not revealed to people how vital psychological well-being is until it's too late. It is laced with stigmatization having people facing mental distress labeled as Mather, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that pronunciation, a mental asylum in Nairobi. However, I aspire to change the narrative. I hope to erect campaigns and organizations that preach compassion and understanding instead of discrimination and labeling. I like this sentence too. It flows very well because of this kind of parallel structure. As I hastily ran through the words on my Kindle, the solution to my mother's confession presented itself. People are rivers, ever changing and ever flowing. They disappear with everything you put in them. Still, your home does have a heartbeat, but not locked in someone else's chest. Just look inside your own. You know what guys, I take it back. I don't think that essay was. It was more like between a seven and an eight, if not already an eight. 
It was pretty emotional, it was exemplary. Honestly, it didn't really have that many issues. It showcased so much V-Spice. Maybe some of the problem could be shorter. Maybe the intellectual curiosity paragraphs could have been merged, but it was already in a really, really awesome place. Honestly, the best part of my job is reading essays like that. We're gonna take a quick break, but don't go anywhere because right after that, we're gonna investigate what knobs were tweaked, what changes were made to make this essay go from a eight out of 10 to a resounding 9.5 out of 10, one of the best essays in the world. And I really do mean that. Hope you guys enjoyed that break. Before we continue, just wanted to remind you guys to please like and subscribe to our channel. It really means the world to me. Ultimately, we do this for you guys. We've already been to college, graduated, been there, done that, but we wanna help you guys make the most of this application season and just help you guys grow. We'll be making some non-college admissions content eventually in this spring. And finally, if you would like your essay professionally edited by us, please don't hesitate to visit www.elevated.school slash edit my essay. Okay, that's enough. Let's dive in. Child, why did no one ever teach you that you cannot turn people into homes? Nikita Gill. In the hushed stillness of an autumn night, my mother unveiled a painful revelation. My father had wed another woman. Nestled in the corner of our living room, her voice quivered as she pondered the other woman's allure. Was it her beauty, youth, or intellect that he had left us for? Uh, I'd never noticed this before, but there's kind of a, a little off rhyme over here. It feels very poetic. Noticed this for the first time when I was reading it out loud. And that is why, my friends, we must always read our essays out loud. The weight of my mother's pain pressed heavily on my shoulders. And in that moment, the roles between parent and child seemed to blur and flip. As the eldest son of three siblings, the weightiest mantle that fell upon me was tending to the fractured pieces of my mother's heart. So these are the kinds of flow upgrades, right? Parallel structure, really strong verbs, that's really elevating this essay from an eight to a nine, eight to a 9.5, actually. Initially, I tried consoling her by stocking up on her favorite pecan butter ice cream. Again, even just adding the flavor, pecan butter guys, lends so much more specificity and authenticity to this story. Surely 13 year old name thought this would heal the wounds inflicted upon her heart. Nice little addition with the Shirley showcases some personality as well. But when this didn't work, I delved into the study of human emotion. Countless visits to the psychology section of the public library became my evening routine. What rendered it so devastating, I wondered. Perhaps the mournful echoes of unfulfilled promises. As I read through publications by famous psychologists like Susan Anderson, I learned about terms like the grief cycle and cognitive dissonance. I also discovered the heart as more than its anatomical intricacies, playing a more prominent role in powering the human psyche. Beyond its rhythmic symphony, recent discoveries revealed that the heart possesses its own neural network, a hidden intelligence steering our emotions. Many doctors can repair an anatomically dysfunctional heart, but few are brave enough to repair an emotionally broken one. I wanted to be one of them. All right, so we have significantly condensed the curiosity section, but we're still keeping some key details, specific terms. We also have some more poetic devices, like I don't know if you guys noticed this kind of alliteration, rhythmic, recent, revealed. You wanna make sure you guys are ending your paragraphs very strong. Oftentimes I see a lot of you guys ending your paragraphs with cliches, right? Which is definitely something we wanna avoid. As I wrapped up my research, I stumbled upon an old dusty book tucked away in a dark aisle. It was The Wisdom of a Broken Heart by Susan Piver. Despite her lack of formal psychology training, her insights into the human psyche proved profound. I realized that in depression, nothing matters. And in sadness, everything matters, she wrote. This simple idea enabled me to discern between what to focus on and look past during the therapy session like conversations with my mother. We began with morning affirmations. My heartbreak is just a chapter, not my whole story, and ways to release stress, mainly through angrily punching pillows. Then we'd move to my office, which was a designated corner of my bedroom, lined with yoga mats to officially begin the session. So why do you feel like you can't move on from this, mom? I asked in my best therapist voice. It's because I gave your father my heart, and now that he has left, I have nowhere else to call home, she confessed. I nodded and listened. This took place for months, and slowly, with patient dialogue, things got better. At last, one night, my mother and I snuggled in blankets as we watched her favorite comedy franchise, Medea. We laughed at Tyler Perry's comedic genius, earnestly scooping to the bottom of pints of pecan butter ice cream. 
this time they work like magic. Okay, so it's these little additions that I'm gonna bold here and then saying I asked in my best therapist voice, even though that this is kind of a sad scenario, but this student is approaching it with so much maturity, with poise, and ultimately optimism. That's very, very hard to teach, but that's something that we can help you guys with when we edit your essays. In the quiet, tender moments that followed, I found that psychology, though often hidden in the depths of our hearts, is the silent orchestrator of our lives. Guiding my mother through the smoldering ruins of love, I realized that it's the unseen threads of our thoughts emotions and resilience that weave our existence. In Kenya, poor mental health is laced with stigmatization, with people facing mental distress and being labeled as Mathari, a slang term used for mental asylum patients in Nairobi. However, I aspire to change the narrative. I aim to erect campaigns that shun discrimination and preach compassion, healing one sick heart at a time. Nikita's poem concluded with a solution for mother's confession. People are rivers, ever flowing. Still, your home does have a heartbeat, but not locked in someone else's chest. Just look inside your own. <sighs> Beautiful piece. I've read it five, six, seven times, and it still still hits me each and every time. And um, yeah, one last thing that I would like to highlight is how this student starts talking about not just helping their mom, but really extending right their sphere of influence to beyond their family, to their entire country. So inherently within the Common App, the question is, what are you gonna do with your college degree, right? Why do you want to go to college? It's very important to answer this question, usually in the takeaway in the reflection section. And this student, boom, absolutely hammered that nail on its head. My dear virtual little siblings, I really do hope that you found this video helpful. I just want you guys to know that we are constantly and furiously rooting for you no matter what happens. We're here with you in the trenches. Like I said, we're not taking any days off. You know, we've done this rodeo a few times now. You guys only have to live through it once, but I feel like I'm living through it every single year, but it's okay. My mission is to help you guys and uh, hopefully through videos like these, we are making your lives a little bit better or easier. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I know I said it before, I'm gonna say it again because I really do mean it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll catch you at the next one. All right, take care friends. Pa -pa 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 Peace. Thank you.